In this video, I'm going to show you how to obtain accurate confidence intervals for a multiple R squared that you might obtain from a multiple regression. Importantly, it's based on the non-central F distribution. So if you see other calculators online or other tutorials that are showing you how to calculate a confidence interval for multiple R squared, you'll want to make sure that it's based on the non-central F distribution because Michael Smithson has done a fair amount of research showing that this is the accurate way to get it outside of bootstrapping. Now in SPSS, as you'll know, you don't get confidence intervals for multiple R squared. And even if you had bootstrapping as a module in SPSS, you're not going to get confidence intervals for the multiple R squared either. So this is one of the few ways that you have to get it. Now fortunately for us, in this paper that Michael Smithson published in 2001 in Educational and Psychological Measurement, at the end of the paper, he includes all the syntax commands required to obtain the results in that surprisingly long syntax file. It doesn't take a long time to execute the syntax, fortunately, and I have actually copied and pasted all those syntax commands into a file, and I'll put a link in the description of the video so that you can download this. Now once you have the syntax file, all you have to do is input four pieces of information. And surprisingly, you don't need the R squared value. All you need is the F value associated with the multiple regression analysis, and I'll show you an example in a minute where to obtain that value. You need the degrees of freedom, and you also need the confidence. Now, Smithson includes 95% confidence in his example, and I'm going to show you later that probably you want 90% confidence, not 95%, if you're using 0.05 as your demarcation criterion for statistical significance. For the first example, I'm going to show you from my textbook, which I haven't launched yet, but you can get from howtostatsbook.com. It's a freely available textbook, downloadable in PDF files. I'll put a link in the description. There's also a YouTube channel associated with this textbook. In fact, virtually every analysis has a corresponding video that you can watch uh, to follow me doing the analyses. That's on a YouTube channel called How to Stats Book, which is right here. And I've got something like 340 videos or more. Check it out if you're interested. I will launch it formally soon enough. So going back to the example, what I want is, this is the typical multiple regression analysis. You'll get a model R with an R squared of 0 0.130. And this is what I want 95% or 90% confidence intervals around. And the values that I need to input into the data file to run the Smithson syntax file are actually all in the ANOVA table. So this F value of 18.525 corresponds to testing this R squared value for statistical significance. And it is significant, p less than 0 0.001. And here are the degrees of freedom, 2 and 247. So if I input that into the data file, so 18.5, 18.525, and degrees of freedom of 2 and 247, 2 and 247, and I'm going to use 95% confidence here because most people probably would. But as I'll show you, it's probably better to use 90%. So once I've got that inputted into the data file, I literally just have to run all. And SPSS produces this output file, but I prefer to go to the data file because the results are reported to a more accurate level. Now, first of all, I'll draw your attention to the R squared. So this syntax file actually calculates R squared from the F value and the degrees of freedom. So that corresponds to 0.13. And in fact, that is accurate. The 0.13 is right here. That's the R squared value. Now, importantly, the lower bound and upper bound are reported here at the end of the data file. So I've got 0.06 or 0.0586, more accurately, and 0.21 or 0.205. These are the 95% confidence intervals that surround the point estimate of 0.13. And these are accurate. They're based on the non-central distribution. So that is how you can execute this file, really quite simple. Now the last thing I'm going to show is maybe you should be using 90% confidence intervals. And the reason I say this is if you have a multiple R squared value that is just close-ish to 0.05 but lower than 0.05 and you calculate the 95% confidence intervals for the R squared point estimate, it's not going to be greater than zero, the lower bound that is. So let me show you an example. So here's me calculating the statistical significance of a model R squared F value, say. And suppose the F value is 3.40 with 3 and 46 degrees of freedom. 
you get a p-value of 0 0.025. That's what you would get if you had the analysis here. So let's just say it was 3 and 46 degrees of freedom and an f-value of 3.4 over here. That would produce a p-value that is equal to 0 0.0254. It's statistically significant. Now if I input these values into SPSS here and then calculate the 95% confidence intervals, it's going to suggest that I don't have a significant result when I actually really do. So let me show you that. 3.4, 3 3.46, 3 3 and 95% confidence. So I'm going to run the syntax. And what I get is a R squared value of 0 0.80 and a lower bound of 0. And the lower bound basically touching 0 is suggesting I don't have a significant result. But I do have a significant result. In fact, I know that is true from this. So what happens if I change this to 0 0.90 is that now I get my significant result such that the 95% confidence intervals do not intersect with 0. So let me run that again. So again, the point estimate is 0.18, and the lower bound is estimated at 0 0.01, getting close to 0, which it should be because the p-value is closest to 0 0.05, but not very close. So it should be something greater than 0 0.00, and the upper bound of 0 0.30. Now, I don't have a published reference suggesting that you should use 90% confidence intervals for multiple R squared. There are other people who say this. I just don't have a peer-reviewed publication or a textbook that says it. So maybe somebody else out there actually knows of one and can make a comment to that effect. And I'll include it as a reference for this procedure to use 90% confidence if you're using alpha 0.05 as your demarcation for statistical significance in the context of a multiple regression. So that is how to calculate accurate 95% or 90% confidence intervals for a multiple R squared value, which you can't get in SPSS, and that's true even if you had bootstrapping.